You know, I feel like it was only last episode that I said that I was kind of getting tired of mechanism chemistry. Hey, wait a minute. That was last episode, wasn't it? I know, I know. It's like all I've been doing. Hopefully today is the last day we ever, 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 ever have to do mechanism chemistry again. So as you guys can see, my base is still very irradiated. I've been AFKing a little bit, not too much, but I have some stuff going on over here. Specifically, look at all of this that I have. Decent amount of stuff. And today I do actually just want to finish out all of the mechanism chemistry by making the fusion reactor and then also the SPS thing. I don't know what it's abbreviated for. I have no idea, <laughs> but we're going to make it. And you guys might be asking, but you did solve your power problems. Why do you need to do that? And well, that's because I want nether stars. It is actually quite important to automate them. And antimatter seems to be like one of the better ways to do it. Uh, like this is really fast. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to try and set up that. Oh, I, I'm not looking at the camera. We're going to try and set that up today. But anyways, guys, welcome to the next episode of All the Mods 9. I believe we're on episode 20, 20 or 21. I don't remember which. But anyways, yes, today we're going to try and finish out mechanism chemistry, I believe. <laughs> we should be able to i have enough polonium and whatnot for a bunch of stuff so yeah so i need to make this fusion reactor now i don't think it's gonna be that hard to make <laughs> hopefully not all right so i'm gonna put this down by all the other power generation stuff Hop okay wait I, I should explain a little bit shouldn't i so this fusion reactor is supposedly really good <laughs> a lot better than this if you're running at the max speed which obviously we're probably not whoa once again oh okay that was weird you can see my backpack but not me uh, we're probably gonna be running this at max speed simply because we don't need to we might need to in the future but this is kind of like eventually when i need to upgrade my power i'll just need to do more mechanism chemistry which you know that i think about it's kind of what i'm doing now isn't it <laughs> but with this nifty thing i should be able to see exactly how to make it so i guess i'm just gonna go ahead and do that of course while it's all being irradiated which i'm sure is safe Okay, so I believe this is the... Will it turn on? Yes. Okay, awesome. So we have the fusion reactor. This thing, despite how scary looking, how expensive it is, the materials required to make it, actually is so much safer than this thing. Whoa, there's no radiation over here anymore. I just uh, noticed that. Oh, sweet. So that means it's all just over here. Okay, there's still six hours left on that from, from my mishap last episode, but we're getting there. Uh, but this thing actually doesn't explode, doesn't cause any radiation. It's actually quite nice i'm not gonna lie it's it's amazing truly but you do have to do this to get to it so that's kind of the drawback right now obviously when dealing with mechanism it's never just as easy as building one thing of course it's everyone's favorite thing chemistry so i need to make deuterium and i also need to make tritium which does not really look that bad um i should have a bunch of solar neutron activators already yeah <laughs> i do deuterium is also just heavy water so that should also be really easy all right, now, before I actually do start all of the chemistry, there is one more thing I need to do, and then it's actually get the power needed to activate the fusion reactor. So what I'm going to do, I believe I need a laser focus matrix here. You should build again. Okay, cool. Uh, am I going to do this right? I'm not sure. I think I need to do this. Does the red dot need to be on the other side? It might need to be. Can I uh, rotate you? So the red dot should all be facing towards that. And then uh, if I'm not mistaken here, I'm going to need some blocks. So what I need to do is I need to get a bunch of lasers, not like that that i am on fire now but i'm pretty sure i need to do this and then you are gonna start yes so you're gonna start doing this i don't remember how much it takes or needs see look at that wonder what happens when i uh <laughs> when i walk in front of that i'm gonna test it bad idea oh wow that got rid of a lot of the power in here <laughs> ah, but back to chemistry. I'm hoping today's chemistry isn't actually going to be that long. So first up, I'm going to need heavy water, which is going to need a whole bunch of pumps. You know, I should probably do this in a separate area, but I'm not going to do that. So for deuterium, I'm, I'm just going to use this spot right here. <laughs> All right, now I'm kind of hoping. See, I don't know actually how well this is going to work. I don't think it's going to work that well at all. But I'm going to need a whole bunch of pumps here. And the goal is that these are going to suck out water from below here, get heavy water, and we should be able to just turn that heavy water into deuterium Alrighty, so i believe i have a good deuterium setup i am making 0.064 i don't know if that's i think i'm making half a bucket uh per tick <laughs> it looks like i'm making a whole lot which was the goal and now the way i'm doing this is not through just six of these lousy electric pumps no no i'm doing it through 50 of them down here because this is what we're going to need to run this thing at a really good pace we're making half a bucket of heavy water every tick is this enough i don't know <laughs> Now, the solar neutron activators are going to be a little bit more difficult because, as you guys know, the ones that I have aren't 
really running at full capacity. As we can see here, right now it's sunset, so these aren't really running that fast at all. Uh, we're actually getting more nuclear waste than we're using in these because it's about to be nighttime, which I guess means I should probably sleep. But I have done some research and apparently the biome these are in actually does matter. I'm gonna try and do something cheeky and perhaps go into a biome that's always daytime. Uh, always a cold biome, I believe, is good. And then them being high up also helps. So yeah. So after some research and looking at different Reddit threads, I found the Everbright biome is actually the way to go. Now I'm going to need a few things. Now I believe I need to go find one of those blue skies dudes. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there's one pretty close by. Ah, oh, this is the wrong one though. Okay. Well, uh, don't want to go in here. No, no. I need to find another one of these houses. Hmm. There's another house here. And it has the right stuff. Now, can I mine this and then just move the portal? Because that's totally what we're going to do. Oh, yeah. All right. And then I should never need to go here ever again. Hello, guy. Are you selling anything interesting? So, I think I'm just going to put this portal by my nether portal here. Uh, obviously, it's not going to look as pretty, but it is what it is. <laughs> Until I'm able to get more of these bricks. So, I should. I think I just do it like this. I'm scared. I've never done anything related to this mod before. And that's really loud. But uh, I'm going in. Do I have food? I should have food. I have food. I'm going in. All right, cool. Oh, I can't fly. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't fly in here. Oh, that sucks. Wow. Okay. Hey, that's loud. We don't We don't need to do that. Well, I guess that is going to make things slightly difficult here, but that is okay because I'm just going to go up to as high up as I can, and apparently I can't fly. I, I wonder if I'll be able to use my jetpack or not. I haven't used that in a minute. But So this actually brings me to something that I've had to do for a while. <laughs> I'm going to get some wireless AE. I don't particularly want to go back and forth from that dimension to this one over and over and over. Okay, so the infinity range booster. Oh, I need four of those. And some nether stars. Okay, hold on. Oh, I got a loot pinata on it. Ooh, the thing is I don't need this ender bag anymore now that I think about it. Uh, Because now I have my wireless terminal and I can just put stuff in my inventory like that. That's kind of nifty if you ask me. I'm kind of excited for that actually. So I should be able to make this dimensional card. Sweet, awesome. I'm going to put this down here. Boom. Dimension card. Okay. So now if I go down into this dimension, I should be able to see all my stuff through my wireless crafting terminal and I should be able to just make everything. Are we good? I can't seem to see anything, but I can grab stuff from here, which is exactly what I want. Now I think I think, I think it should be, I should test this before I do anything actually. So can I go ahead and do this? And will you, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say this is high enough. I'm kind of tired of just building. <laughs> so to make my life a little easier, I am gonna put a waste stone here. Uh, I'm just gonna call this solar, I'm gonna call it the SNA farm, the solar neutron activator farm, because that's what these are called. Um, and we should be good. I think, like I said, I'm only gonna need two of these, which is gonna be kind of nifty. They don't need power or anything. They just need lithium. With the help of some pressurized tubes and an Emmy interface or something else of some sort, you know what, actually, what I'm gonna do, uh, let me go back. I need some entangle blocks. Now, I'm not actually quite sure <laughs> if this small uh, evaporation chamber is making enough lithium. So I think what I'm gonna do is make a whole bunch more of them in the other dimension. You know, I said I was hoping the mechanism chemistry wouldn't be that bad and uh, here we are. <laughs> it's terrible. So I think all I need is an interface that connects up to this system. And so something like here, right? What I need to do is get an entangled block set up with this. And I have some extra ones here. Uh, so you, I can connect up to you. Invalid. <gasps> oh, that sucks. Okay. You know, I think I could do instead, instead of using an ME interface, because I don't really want to do wireless AE. I think I can just connect it up straight from here. I can. Okay, cool. I know exactly what we're going to do. So from up here, I should be able to bind this tritium into here, right? Now, obviously, I guess it doesn't want to go in right now, but given that the siding was correct, it would be good. So now from here, I just need to make lithium and a lot of it. So you guys know what time it is. I'm going to get this done as fast as I possibly can because I'm tired of mechanism chemistry. Seriously, I am. <laughs> All 
Alrighty, so I believe I have a system working here. Uh, I kind of just brainstormed it. I'm like, okay, now I kind of know what I'm going to do. So let me quickly explain it. So I'm not just kind of going through this plan. Like what in the world just happened? So <laughs> the plan is I have these thermal evaporation chambers. Now, uh, these ones are making brine. Then they're returning that brine into lithium, which then I'm storing and then putting into a storage network here. So I should be able to access all of it from this storage network, right? And then I'm going to dump it into these roach rarity condensators where then they will be turned into liquid or uh, liquid no lithium and gas form now hopefully that's not that hard <laughs> um i would like a storage access point and i'm kind of hoping that it'll just reach now if it doesn't which it does okay cool so now what i can do i think i should be able to pull lithium out of there and now i should be turning these into normal lithium like this and you guys should be working yes now you guys are making normal lithium which is perfect awesome that should be plenty so now this lithium <laughs> right this beautiful wonderful lithium i should be able to just gases output on the bottom and we should be making a whole bunch of tritium now how much is it making a tick it looks like it's making 77 a tick uh are we making enough brine for that or enough yeah i think we are making enough brine it looks like we're good on the lithium i'm gonna need seven of these solar neutron activators is what it looks like hopefully <laughs> All right, so you guys are all getting lithium. I'm probably going to be losing lithium here in a minute uh, simply because, yeah. Oh, uh, we're probably not making enough for this to completely be caught up, which is a little bit frustrating. How much am I making a tick? I don't know exactly. Yeah, I may I may need to just make a whole bunch more of these, which is super annoying. And I hate that it's designed that way, but it is what it is. Yeah, so I'm making 324 millibuckets a tick. Is that enough? No, no, I need around 500, I believe. So probably going to need two more of these, which I guess that means four more of them. So let me go ahead. Ugh, mechanism chemistry, seriously. It's so dumb. <laughs> I need to make four more of these. I'm like talking to you. Yeah, I'm gonna go make four more of these. I'm not excited to do that. Not at all. I'm gonna do it anyway, though. Be right back. Am I making enough lithium now? The heat's going up, maybe? <laughs> Okay, awesome. So we are producing the 500 millibuckets needed. Now, there is a reason we need exactly 500 millibuckets. These should only be doing exactly what they need to do, is the hope. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Perfect. So these should be locked to 512 a tick. Now, the reason I am doing that is because the injection rate at 1,000 means 500 of each fuel. If it doesn't, then we're going to do an injection rate of 500, which look at the amount power that's gonna make now it's at this point that i normally stop recording for a bit and go to edit however i am just so excited for this i'm not gonna lie to you guys i really want to oh i can fly again i really want to see this thing work now i think this thing is good to activate now what i need to do to activate it is i'm actually well for one uh what i need to do is go down to chemistry I need to make sure my system can see the stuff so here i need to see tritium and also deuterium hopefully making enough of each if not we can always upgrade them down to upgrade and I just need to have some export buses on here, one for deuterium and one for tritium, I think. So those should be online. If I go ahead and say I want tritium to go in here, you're going to start going in there. Perfect. And deuterium in here, you're going to start going in there. And I also need, I need this DT fuel. Now that shouldn't be too hard, but I'm also going to need this. I don't know what, how to say this. I'm not going to bother. And you should make some DT fuel. How much this am I going to need? I think this is literally all I'm ever going to need. Okay, so... I figured out the whole time I, I, I messed this up, <laughs> but I need to have the power stored in here. Now I have this thing set to pulse and I'm hoping uh, I should be able to just turn this thing on. Now I'm going to need to have this flux plug here ready for power, uh, bypass the limit for sure. Do you work? Is it going? Oh, I think it's going. Oh, it's definitely going. Okay, so I should see. Yes, look at that. That's kind of cool. And we should be good on tritium and deuterium. It looks like we are. Now, what if I up this uh, fuel rate? Let's, let's say 50. 50? Are we, good? are we good with 50? That makes so much power. <laughs> that makes... And we have... Wait, 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 wait. We should have, like, so much more in stock. It looks like we're good. We're looking good. <laughs> now, what if I turned it up? I'm sorry, I'm just having way too much fun with this. Let's do 200. Oh, wait, I can't? I can do 99. <laughs> That's a lot of power. Okay. Holy. Oh, wow. That is a lot of... How much is that? <laughs> oh, and it's still heating up? <laughs> Alrighty, well, now that I am making... I believe uh, it's... Is it close to all the way on now? I think so. How much is this making? 
yeah j just a little bit of power <laughs> i don't even know like this is gonna get full with how much i play on this world uh yeah we're, we're probably gonna need to upgrade this induction matrix which is you know i have a lot of lithium for it so hopefully we'll be good eventually but now it is time for the goal today in my very irradiated base i need nether stars and for that i need a lot of antimatter now i've been making a whole bunch of polonium now unfortunately this antimatter <laughs> look at how much this this is ridiculous so 200 million fe a tick i am not making at all and i don't really know if i can make that that's possible at all maybe it is maybe it's not so i do have a plan for this because right now we do have a uh, way too much power and i know exactly how i'm gonna use it now obviously we can't sustain 200 million uh fe a tick <laughs> for very long so we're just gonna need to throttle it this is the goal here and I'm going to hopefully come up with a logic system to be able to figure that out. It shouldn't be too hard. It should just be some redstone. But I do need to make this multi-block. Now, where do I want to really build this thing? I did not think about that. You know, I actually think I'm going to put it right here. I, I don't actually have a use for this place down here in my base. And I, I need an excuse to finish this anyway. So, you know, this might motivate me to actually get some building done. Ah, it's on. <laughs> I am excited for this. Okay. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Okay. So I should be able to change one of these two antimatter output. Ooh, not like that. Like that? Yes. So SPF port, SPF port is on output. Now what I'm going to need, I'm going to need to grab, where is it? This guy. Yes. You, I want to grab. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> is this a good idea? No absolutely not a good idea but i'm gonna do it anyway yeah yes i am okay so this should take polonium and put it into here perfect okay i just need to give it power um which i'm gonna do here all right this up here i'm missing the super oh my that scared me i'm not gonna lie i turned this on whoa check that out that's kind of cool oh wow i'm taking a screenshot of that that's pretty cool Okay, anyways, this should be making antimatter. Okay, I can turn that down now. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And this is making it at a pretty decent rate, uh, just 800. If I, uh, okay, maybe I don't want to bypass the limit, but we could just keep this at 800 if you get sick, to be honest. We're making way more than that. And this is making antimatter at a pretty decent rate. Um, do I actually want to use more? Because I'm, I'm still making a lot. Let's let's change the limit here to 2 million if you tick. That seems good. That seems like it's going pretty fast. Maybe I could do more. We could do 5. How fast does that go? Okay, you know, we can get this up a little bit. We could do 10. <laughs> That's making a lot of antimatter. Now, we do need a thousand of this if we want to make the antimatter pellet, which I don't know if we super duper need this for anything uh, until we need, like, yeah, this for the all the mod star, which right now we don't need, but eventually we are going to need this. There's a whole bunch of other stuff we need, though, so I'm probably not going to worry about it, and we'll just end up storing the antimatter. 10 million FE a tick, huh? <laughs> We're still making way more than that. How are we doing on um, polonium? Polonium, I feel like we should be doing not that good on. No, <laughs> we're doing not, not very good on polonium. Yeah, so I guess it's probably wise to turn this back down to the 800,000 it was at. Or I guess we can just stick with 1 million if you tick. So this should be a lot slower. It's going to make it a lot less polonium. Um, now, are we going to gain polonium now? No, not really. <laughs> I think I found the sweet spot. Okay, I think I've had a really good spot. So the polonium is like staying really steady here. I guess I could probably lower this to 821. Yeah, I do need two antimatter pellets. So, oh, that's gonna take a while, isn't it? <laughs> that's gonna take a long time to go through. I need 2,000 villa buckets. That's a lot. Okay, you know, for now, I'm gonna save this 821 number. Let's just crank this up for right now. Now, currently I am definitely not making enough radioactive waste to actually run the SPS machine down here. Um, yeah, no, definitely not. I'm like out of polonium, as you can see. We're definitely not making enough. However, there is a solution. Now, the plan is for radioactive bees. Now, I need a lot of these. Now, unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to need radiation or, uh, yeah, see, or an antimatter pellet here, which we're getting there. So, I think that's what I'm going to use my first antimatter pellet on is actually getting a bee set up for wasted radioactive. Now, I should be able to make a whole bunch of these because I need radioactive bees, right? I should have some of those already. I, By the way, the sound of bees will never get old to me. I'm never going to mute the sound. It's so beautiful. So I'm going to breed. Oh, it looks like I already had some uh, 
going up here making radioactive bees. Okay, in that case, I'm gonna make 15 of these. You know, actually, I'm gonna make more than that. And I need to kill them with the radiation that's in my base and then turn them into wasted nuclear bees, which, you know, it's kind of cruel when I sound it out like that, but you know. All right, now call me crazy. I'm hoping you'll get irradiated. Surely there's some radiation. Oh yeah, there's some radiation over here. Okay, you get irradiated. Yes, okay. Oh, he just died. I guess that means I'm gonna need to use my polonium pellets, which I really didn't want to do because he was supposed to turn to a, a nuclear wasted bee, but I guess it's just a chance. So, hey, you, yes, I got what I wanted. Okay, wasted radioactive bees. I need to do that a lot more times. Okay, so far I have five wasted radioactive bees. Now, I'm pretty sure that these, they, I think they need the, yeah, I'm pretty sure they need antimatter pellet or they need to be in an irradiated environment now. I'm not super duper sure if I want to irradiate my apiary. Probably not the best idea. So I think I, I'm just gonna bank on the antimatter pellet <laughs> when that comes around and we'll end up doing that. So while waiting for the thousand millibuckets of antimatter to go through, which by the way, I've been AFKing on my world for like five hours. I calculated for 2000 at the rate it's going for 2000 millibuckets. I'm gonna need around seven hours of AFK time. Well, I've been a little more, I, I forgot a little bit, but I did some things around the base. I worked on the chemistry part of the base a little bit more a little bit more of the green section a little bit of montage because i did some stuff while i was waiting and i didn't want to do nothing and just sit there so yeah <laughs> you know what time it is because i do uh i have some pol uh, not polonium antimatter here not 2000 but that's okay i only need 1000 of it uh in order to make my wasted radioactive oh 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 that reminds me another thing that i did that i did not mention in that little montage is i completed all five or not, not five four of these beehives with wasted radioactive bees i'm hoping this will be enough to really boost our production of radioactive waste of radioactive waste because if we can do that then whoa that was loud yes hopefully i have enough radioactive bees and if that works out then we can i'm pretty sure just completely disable our fission reactor here uh there's no real need for it for making like enough nuclear waste because then i don't need to spend all this stuff on fissile fuel and you know life becomes a lot easier but you know maybe we'll keep it just because I somehow need to get exactly 1,000 of this antimatter into this chemical crystallizer because if I don't, then I'm kind of screwed. Okay, let's see if I can get this to work. Okay, that worked. Okay, cool. To go in here? Yes, we have exactly 1,000. Okay, alrighty, so I have, oh, lo and behold, the antimatter pellet. Oh my gosh, I feel like I've been working on this for like way too long. Holy moly, look at it in all of its glory. It's beautiful, really. Okay, this is the most precious thing I own. <laughs> but now I should be able to go over here put this here and they should start cooking. <laughs> so some of these in here, I'm hoping, yeah, see that works. We got the, waste, the wasted radioactive combs. Awesome, they made a lot of them too. Now these comb blocks, I'm gonna kind of just want to send back straight into my base because these need to be immediately processed into, that's a lot of nuclear waste. So just a bit of extracting on all of these. So now what I think I'm going to do is I'm just gonna store these over here in chemistry and then have them processed here in chemistry as well. All right, awesome. So this guy is getting everything he needs. I'm just gonna put all of my radioactive related stuff over on this part of chemistry. See that I'm very happy with. Now I just have to get it out of there. So something a little bit like this and the nuclear waste should be going to one of these. I guess uh, it probably shouldn't go into this one. I'm so happy with that. That's amazing. <laughs> it looks like one chemical oxidizer, oxidizer is also going to be enough to keep up with it. So that's perfect. And this should hopefully just eventually back up with nuclear waste. You don't have to worry about anything exploding. Hopefully not at least. So now what I need to do is I need to go ahead and grab this guy, go to my solar farm over in the Everbright dimension and then just hook it up. And I think we should be good to go. So if I do something this, that should all be going in here, turning into polonium at a pretty fast rate. And I'm assuming we're keeping up. But finally, after hours, hours, literally hours of waiting. In fact, all the radiation from my base has been gone for quite a while now. Oops, I, I just dropped my, my thing. <laughs> Look what I have. 2,419 millibuckets of antimatter. Oh, you know what we're gonna do? We're totally going to chemically crystallize this. Yes, okay, so I have the antimatter in here. I should be good to make the two antimatter pellets. Oh my gosh, you guys know how long this took? <laughs> it's finally done. I'm done going crazy. So I should be able to make the machine that I need, the anti-protonic nucleosynthesizer. Uh, I gotta figure out how I work this thing, because like I said, yeah, I, I really don't know. More mechanism chemistry is what it looks like we're gonna be doing, which, you know, I guess subtly in the world seeing as that's what we've been doing for 
very long time now. I do need to make sure that my system, however, can actually see this antimatter. So I should be able to just do this. So I'm going to stick to somewhere over here. But basically, the plan is I need to find a way to get these nether stars, right? Yes, I need inert nether stars. So these inert nether stars, I'm going to need a pressurized reaction chamber. So something like this going on here. I'm assuming what do these need? Just ethylene. So what I need to do is I need to have this basically inside of an infinite loop. Uh, I need some neutron gas and water. So water, I should be able to do just like this. You know, what I'm going to do is this. So these are on a different channel from everything. So you should be getting ethylene if I have gases input on the right like this. Hopefully there we go. Ethylene. And then I need also wither skulls to go in here. A whole bunch of them. So I should be getting wither skulls in here. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm making these inert nether stars and also this neutron gas. And I'm probably going to want to store all of that. And I also don't know how my ethylene's doing. All right. I need to store the neutron gas over here. All right. So the neutron gas should be getting stored. Now I also need to store the inert nether stars. Now I'm just going to do this with a drawer, I think. So this should be going, making a whole bunch of neutron gas and also inert nether stars. Now I'm going to put a void upgrade on the nether stars. I can go ahead and let's say I wanted to do this and let's say I wanted to put antimatter. All right, so I should be able to just provide antimatter right here. Hopefully we're working. Maybe not. Uh, hold on. Yes, there we go. All of the antimatter that I own is right there. <laughs> We're going to move that all into here. Ooh, look at that. That's juicy. That is what I like to see. Okay, I think this is, uses a lot of power, so... We're just going to go for it, right? Um, <laughs> there's a few things we need to put in here. Now, one of them being some inert nether stars, which I guess I can just do like this. Have it connected up like this. All right, so are you going to work? Maybe. Oh, <laughs> it's very slow. Oh, wow. That made a lot of nether stars. Wow, that is 64 nether stars. <laughs> that was really fast. I think uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. Let me finish setting this up and I'll get back to you guys because now I need to store these nether stars. Okay, see that makes so many nether stars. I could make this go really fast. Oh, that's you. <laughs> Oh, wow. How, how, what are we looking like on nether stars? That's That's got to be a lot of... That's a lot of nether stars. <laughs> that's a lot of nether stars. I'm definitely... I don't think I'm making like antimatter that fast uh, for it to keep up anyway, but wow. So if I wanted to see those from my system, I should be able to see all those nether... <laughs> That is, that is automated nether stars, everyone. Oh, wow. But anyways, guys, that is unfortunately all the time I have for today. So if you guys did enjoy, please hit the like button down below. We did hit a thousand subs. I have something planned for what I want to do. I, I'm, it's still in the works, so be on the lookout for that. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoy my content, please hit the subscribe button. It would make my day. Seriously, it does. Hit the like button. Always feel free to comment. I will respond to every single one that is respondable, at least. And I will see you guys in the next episode of All the Mods 9. Later.